Good morning, everyone. It is December 24th, 2016, Christmas Eve. Just want to wish everyone a very Merry Christmas. Hope you guys uh, get to spend some quality time with your friends, family, and loved ones. It's definitely uh, a special time here around our house. So um, today I want to bring you uh, a review on the latest um, iteration here of the Sage series from Spyderco. These are knives in what they call their Gentleman line. And uh, the Sage series has had a pretty long history with Spyderco. And uh, they've had multiple versions here over the years. So um, they started here with the, uh, the Sage 1, which was a liner lock design. I guess I should back up for a second. And for those of you who don't know, the, the Sage series uh, commemorates a lot of the... Um, uh, prevalent or most um, you know widely used uh, locking designs within the knife industry. So their idea was to basically make a knife to uh, commemorate the various types of locking designs that uh, people had come up with and designed over the years as kind of a uh, homage, if you want to say, to those particular designers. So again, uh, the Sage 1 was uh, a liner locking design. They had a, a Sage 2, which was a, a Reeve integral lock. Uh, they also had the Sage 3, which was a bolt action, and uh, not shown in this particular catalog, this is the 2016 catalog, they had a Sage 4, which was discontinued, which I believe was a, a lock backing design, and um, it had polished bolsters uh, with a, a wooden um, wooden handle on it, and for whatever reason they you know discontinued that version, I, I guess it just did not sell very well. Which is what Spyderco does, um, you know, when uh, particular knives just don't don't do that well. So, uh, with that said, here in uh, 2016, we got this guy. This is the Sage Five. So this was the long-awaited compression lock Sage. So you guys know the compression lock is something that is um, exclusive to Spyderco. It was, uh, you know, something they designed and came up with. Um, Oh geez, I don't know, probably about 10 years ago now. And it's been highly used on a lot of their knives, ranging from their um, original paramilitary, I think they had a super leaf that used it, and uh, a few other designs, and of course the paramilitary too. But you know, people love the compression lock. It's uh, you know very easy to use and manip manipulate uh, with one hand. It's very smooth. You can uh, you know close it and open very easily with one hand here and um, it was overall just a very nice um, you know very nice locking design that's uh, pleasant to use so let me go ahead and get this out of the way or maybe I'll just close this up like this and we can use this as a bit of a background here for our our particular video but uh, I already have a video out on the Sage 1 I believe and overall, the knife shape and design is identical to that knife. So uh, you have just about a three-inch blade here and S30V steel. Of course, this is a, uh, a Tai Chung produced knife from Spyderco, which is uh, one of their very, very good factories. Uh, full flat ground blade, nothing new or different there. You can see I put my, my mirror edge on this particular guy. Took a very nice edge. Really been kind of like an S30V again lately. Kind of had a period of time where it wasn't um, super into it, but it, uh, I've kind of come back around, and I don't know, I'm kind of enjoying the steel again, which is nice. Um, so again, we have the same uh, laminate carbon fiber handles here. So this is a, a layer of carbon fiber that has been laminated to a G10 scale, which you know gives you the look and feel of carbon fiber, but for less cost. Uh, of course, we have our very nice uh, standoffs there. Flow through design. Let me see if I can show you. Uh, our liners in there are, are milled to reduce weight. And uh, our standard wire pocket clip, which um, you know everyone has grown to love here from the, the Sage and other series from Spyderco. And uh, yeah, you know, overall, really nice design. I think the, uh, the compression lock lends itself very nice on this particular design. Um, you know, I was kind of, excuse me, I was kind of, 
you know, not sure how the compression lock would fare on another knife. Uh, I've, I've gotten so used to it on the paramilitary too um, that I just kind of wondered, you know, would it feel the same? Would it operate the same just in terms of the weight of the blade, uh, things like that? And, uh, you know, I have to say I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised, or not surprised, but, um, you know, it, it, it works well with this design. You know, the, the weight of the blade and the lock uh, is very nice. Let me show you the, the lock up here on this particular guy. If I can bring that in there for you. Of course, the birds are always going crazy when I'm trying to make videos. Uh, but we have, you know, a little, maybe about 40% lock up there on the on this guy. Uh, you know, the, the cutout is about the same as what you see on a paramilitary too, so it's pretty accessible. You can get your finger in there pretty nice. Open and close it without a whole lot of trouble. Um, overall, the knife is very, very smooth. Good action here on this knife. Jeez Louise, these birds. But anyways, um, you know, I, I, I polished uh, the washers on this knife. I went ahead and put a little polish on them uh, for my customer. And uh, the knife is just buttery smooth now, guys. As you can see there, the knife is a uh, free dropper, as we call it here. I don't like to have my knives super loose, otherwise you get blade play, but just enough in there so you can kind of open and close it with one hand and the blade falls just a little bit is uh, is good for me. Let me show you the, the blade center in here also. It's pretty much spot on. I can bring this in and show you guys, but look at that. Pretty much centered, perfect centered blade there. It's, you know, what you expect to see from a, a good Spyderco knife. But, um, yeah, really, really, really nice knife. like this quite a bit here. Uh, I think it's a, a great, great addition to the, um, the Sage series. So for comparison, in terms of smaller EDC-type knives, I wanted to bring in uh, this guy here, the Native, Native 5 in particular. So if some of you guys are, uh, you know, trying to figure out, uh, you know, kind of a smaller gentleman's type knife, which one you're looking at. Maybe this will give you a little bit of comparison. Let me, let me go ahead and just pull this out of the way here so you guys can have a little, little better contrast uh, against this background. So you can see these knives. So you can see that the, the Sage is a little bit bigger. So if you guys, um, you know, find the native to be a little too small for your... Uh, for your liking, let me bring you in just a tad. Uh, maybe the Sage series is, is a good option for you. So if you look at the overall blade length here, if you line these up side by side, uh, edge length is almost identical. Very close. You know, the, the Sage is just a little bit longer, but not by much. Uh, both have that nice finger choil. And, uh, you know, thickness is about the same, or, or width, I should say, if you line these up side by side. Very close, actually pretty much identical. Let me line the handles up here for you. But yeah, look at that. Look at the... If you can line the, the blades up there, you can see the... Oops. You can see that the... Uh, pretty much the same. Very, very close. I never realized how similar these knives were until I lined them up just now. But if you look at the handle, you can see there that the um, Sage handle is just a little bit longer. So you're getting a little more handle there than you are on the Native. But um, let me put these this way. But very, very close in style and shape. A little bit different in blade design there. But... Um, both very good entries here from Spyderco if you're looking for maybe a little bit more of a premium, uh, you know, kind of a higher quality feel. Uh, perhaps, you know, the, the Sage here would be a better option for you, but um, both will give you very good uh, cutting performance and uh, ease of carry, you know, in your pocket. So, uh, something I've really grown to love from Spyderco. They just really seem to nail, um, you know, knives that are uh, very functional and uh, also easy to carry on an everyday basis. You really forget that you, that you have them in your pocket and they just really kind of mesh, um, you know, with your clothes and what you're wearing and your systems and things like that. So, uh, good, uh, good stuff there. So let's um, 
finish this video off by doing a little bit of a, a cut, cut test here for this guy. So I've, I've always liked the Sage because it um, is ground very thin. So it's a very good cutting knife if you can see there of how, how thin that becomes there behind the edge. Uh, it's a very, very thin knife, very good geometry. Uh, you know, Spyderco knives are primarily concerned with, um, you know, cutting performance, uh, you know, beyond everything else. So they basically design knives around the edge and the cutting of the knife, which is something that I enjoy. Uh, you know, sometimes you see knives that, um, you know, they're, they're kind of stylized to look a certain way, uh, but the geometry and functionality of the knife is sometimes, um, you know, compromised in, uh, in, in those regards. So, let me go ahead and just do a little, little cut here for you. Let me bring you up just a little bit. You can see what's going on here. There we go. But, uh, I'll show you the edge real quick. Come on, camera. Come on, camera. There we go. Nice mirror polish. S30V. So let's see how we did here. Oh yeah. Razor. Just love the way spider co knives cut. You know, excellent geometry. So for a lot of younger people, or not really younger people, or I guess people beginning in um, you know knife sharpening things like that, you may find that you know you sharpen knives pretty much the same, uh, similar knives, and some just you know seem to cut better than others, and they wonder why. You know, is the edge um, you know different? Is it not as sharp? And that that sometimes could definitely be a reason why a knife doesn't cut quite as well. But uh, a lot of times it has to do with the edge geometry. So how is how is that uh, how thick is that knife behind the edge? How's the, the geometry overall? Um, you know, does it lend itself through you know passing through material easier than others? So uh, if any of you guys out there are wondering why some of your knives cut better than others, uh, give it a feel behind the edge. You know, see see how thin or thick it is. That may give you an idea as to why some are you know cut better than others. So. All right, guys. Well, um, I definitely went past my 10-minute mark on this video, but I um, hope you enjoyed the little overview here of this knife, the Sage 5. Excellent addition to the Sage line. I think it's going to be a, a home run for Spyderco. It's uh, you know been very well received, and people really enjoy that compression lock and uh, just the overall uh, package that the Sage brings. So. Um, Again, wishing everyone out there a uh, very Merry Christmas, and uh, hope everyone has a Happy New Year. I'll be back uh, before too long with some more knife videos for you. So hopefully uh, 2017 will bring us some uh, new and exciting knife designs that we can talk about uh, um, here on video. So uh, take care, everyone, and I will see you soon. Thanks.